I decided with this film to celebrate water through a sequence that would be visually stunning, a fantasy sequence uh, that kids could just enjoy and love, and that would kick off our movie in a way that no other IMAX theater film has ever been launched with. Greg had sent me a CD with a commercial spot showing these people down at the beach with bubbles flying around them and, and uh, looked like everybody was having a good time. But I, I wanted to make it even more special than the sample that he showed me. But for, for Grand Canyon, I felt, wow, why not just take this to the next level and have, uh, have the action actually interact with these bubbles. So that, uh, that started the, the whole idea about having bubbles moving about the, uh, the live action scenes that Greg had uh, already shot for the film. What we've tried to do with our, our computer generated images with this film is pretty advanced and I think the sophistication of it and the fun of it will be obvious to everyone as they watch the film. Greg said I, I want something that's gonna bring out the 3D aspect of it while also getting the audience involved. In a 3D setting, when people are wearing the glasses watching the film, they can reach out and try to touch things like bubbles and water droplets. A lot of my focus was on bringing as much off the screen into theater space as possible and also making it comfortable so that people that have never seen a 3D film before can actually enjoy it and feel comfortable about watching it. Alan Markowitz and Tim Sassoon are two wonders of our industry. They do some of the best three-dimensional work I've ever seen, and I was able to utilize them in a really creative way through the process of doing this bubble sequence. Well, this is kind of an interesting series of shots here, and, and we're looking at left and right uh, uh, together here, and we're just stepping through it so you can kind of see what it is a little easier. You know, because of, of um, a, a particular optical effects, lens flares tend to be very uninteresting. And one of the things that we can do is we can actually place them in, in space a bit more precisely. So it's, it's essentially, we're building a virtual world that matches the, 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 uh, the position, scale, and depth of the images on screen. And then we're projecting those images onto that uh, uh, imaginary world. And that's what's creating the depth. This is an example also where the falls and the tree back here have somewhat slightly exaggerated stereos so we can see a bit more depth in them than the camera and a camera would actually be able to reproduce whereas the, your foreground is extremely natural your middle ground is extremely naturalistic and then the foreground is pulled out again a little bit more to give you a bit more of a sense of immediacy so it's not so much a question of difficulty as it is uh, just doing more detailed work than less detailed work uh, which really comes down to craftsmanship and at, at the end of the day you, you go wow the, you don't even really is if you show it to someone without telling them anything they have no idea that it wasn't shot in 3d then that you can intercut it freely with with uh, things that were shot 3d and it'll look perfectly natural and, and perhaps even more natural than than the actually uh, uh, photographed in 3d things greg wanted the audience to jump back in their seats at one moment in the film so uh, we came up with an idea of, of a kayaker going over the falls and during his, his run down the falls he kind of slips, catch, tries to catch himself and smacks into the camera. So sure enough we just uh, designed uh, a fully articulated digital kayaker, put him in a full CG environment and allowed Greg to direct a CG character. During the entire sequence we have um, the backgrounds reflected in and the surface of all the bubbles. And that was to uh, give credibility to a computer-generated element within a live-action environment. And that seemed to work really well. And, uh, and in 3D, it worked even better. You know, one of the most delightful things that I think our staff members have participated in over the last few years was seeing children in the theater at the Irvine IMAX watching Grand Canyon Adventure and getting completely blown away and immersed in the bubble sequence. It was an experience that gave all of us the feeling of why we spend our time and a lot of our money to make these films so that people can get enriched and learn more about their world.
Well, how'd you like it? Was it a fun morning? All right. Well, thank you all for being here. Many of the staff members had tears in their eyes after watching uh, the kids get so involved with, with the excitement of being in water and feeling it almost splash you in the face. Um, it's one of those times where in this industry you can get completely overjoyed with the fact that you're enriching people's lives and treating people to experiences that they haven't ever had before. All the 3D, it was awesome. I think it was really engaging, so the kids were really uh, involved. And uh, it's always better to get a message across when you've got people listening. And they were definitely paying attention, so it was a great film. They had me at the bubbles. It was fantastic. The bubbles were jumping out at you. <laughs> Incredibly entertaining. It's just magic. It's absolutely magic. Definitely the best IMAX I've ever seen. Very fun to watch. It's just tremendous. Well, I think 3D really makes you feel like you're in the movie. The 3D was amazing. You stand up and trying to touch the bubbles. <laughs> Uh, out of that and other sequences in Grand Canyon Adventure, you're going to get captivated with the visual effects that we've been able to manage. We spend a lot of time on these, and so it's, it's a lot of work, but it's worth it. Okay, okay, okay.